Good morning. I'm out earlier this morning. Uh, Justin and I got up earlier than we usually do and did our morning reading together. And my gosh, it's colder this time of day. I'm not used to, I guess, under 30. But here's what I want to talk about today. Trusting that everything happening is happening for your good. And this is something that my mentor, Felicia Searcy, continues to teach me and support me with. A couple days ago, or maybe it was yesterday, um, I talked about agreements with friends. We talked about how supportive that can be for you to make agreements with your friends uh, and all relationships of the expectations that you each have for each other, the hopes that you have, the grace that you'll have, the forgiveness, the understanding, and in the words of myself and my friend Mary, you know, we say to each other, you just, you can't fuck this up. <laughs> so I had a couple questions after that post about, you know, what if that friend that you want to make this agreement with doesn't want to make the agreement with you? What if that relationship that you invite into this holy um, understanding, this holy agreement, hi Janelle, what if they don't want to make that agreement with you and how to navigate that? And I just thought, boy, that's a great question. I'm gonna hop on and answer it, you know, so that everybody can hopefully feel the support and use this to navigate. So if you're in a relationship with someone and you've decided, I wanna make this agreement and I wanna invite them into it, what happens if they decline? Because they have every right to. They don't have to do this agreement just because it makes you feel better. And this is where trusting your good comes in. The way Felicia explains it, there's no such thing as private good. This is really gonna come down to you know your faith and what you believe in. So take what you love, leave what you don't. This is my belief. I don't believe that our creator puts, puts us on this earth and says what's good for you is going to be bad for someone else. Truly, deeply good. From that place of expansiveness and divine truth, okay? Just to clarify. Um, and what I mean by that is, if you say to this person, I want to enter into this agreement with you, and they resist, or they kick and scream, or they just simply say no, then trusting that everything is for your good means accepting their response, accepting that this is maybe a limited relationship, giving them permission to disagree, which is probably potentially the hardest thing, and trusting that as you release the energy that you are investing in this individual, someone else who is open and eager and wants to support you in the way that you need to be supported becomes available to you. So does this make sense? And how many of you are feeling that um, frustration, the feeling that uh, this is not for my good perhaps? And can you start to imagine with the, the lens of curiosity, what if it was? Hey guys, we're talking about, a couple days ago I hopped on and talked about making agreements in relationship with people in your life. I'm really getting super intentional with it. How do I want this to go? What do I expect from this relationship? What are my hopes of this relationship? Thank you. And, you know, some people are not gonna wanna do that with you and how to let that be okay, and how to not make it mean something about you, because it doesn't. Anything anybody does never means anything about us, truly. <laughs> so I just wanted to go over, there were a couple questions after that call. What if the person says no uh, call uh, live? What if the person doesn't wanna go into a, um, an agreement with me? So here's the thing, if it's really important to you, I really want to encourage you to look at that and consider, is this for my good? 
because I believe that everything that happens for us is for our good. And notice I said for us and not to us. Is this for my good? And maybe even a twist on the question, how could this be for my good? For instance, if a particular person in your life declines, does that make room for someone else? Who has and shares your desire for connection in a deeper, more intimate way? So, and this can extend, you know, really knowing that everything happens for your good extends beyond relationship. It goes into everything, you know, like, um, I'm trying to think of an example in my life, like my stomach, you know, my stomach would get upset. I had a really hard time eating and I could sit there and, and there, you know, you have to make room for your grief, right? This is not about doing a spiritual bypass and just being like, oh, I'm in pain. This must be good. <laughs> right? It's, it's taking a deep breath. It's feeling into what's happening in your body. It's deeply honoring it. It's processing any grief, any emotions that come up and then moving through that and deciding, okay, what is in this? Again, through the eyes of curiosity that is here to support me. I could have crumbled. I went two weeks, I couldn't eat solid food. This was a few years ago. I was on a liquid diet. I lost like 25 pounds. It was nuts. And what did this invite me into? A deeper love, a deeper tenderness, a deeper connection with my body. Forgiveness, patience. It invited me to connect and put myself first in a way that I had never done before. And I tell you, that experience changed the entirety of my life to the point where, I gotta tie my shoe. You know, to the point where, just like we were talking about a couple days ago, I've got my checklists but nothing comes before taking care of me because I choose to truly live this day. And to truly live this day means to feel great in my body and put myself first. And in this way, we are the least selfish, <laughs> which as I talk about, you know, the, the societal belief is that putting yourself first is selfish. Fuck that. How, how available can you be to the people in your life if you're empty? It's selfish not to. So let this be permission <laughs> to put yourself first. <laughs> okay, so a couple things. We talked about trusting that everything is happening for your good. We talked about not doing a spiritual bypass yeah, amen, <laughs> on um, pain issues, the human experience, it's there. It's there for a reason. It's not meant to be bypassed through some spiritual ascension. And perhaps when we give ourselves permission to move through it, to feel it, to presence the experience, we move through it a little bit more quickly and are then able to put on this new perspective. How is this happening for my good? What could this teach me? What could this support me in? And to try not to forecast, like there's no way in hell, two years ago, me not being able to eat solid food for two weeks, would I have been able to predict, oh, this is going to help me put myself first every day. So try not to forecast it. You just don't know. Curiosity, man. It's like trust and curiosity are the words I'm working with this year. Are you working with a word? What is it? Oh, you guys have to see this. It's so beautiful. Oh, thanks for coming with me. This has been one of the most enjoyable parts of my day is just being with you on my walk. And if you are enjoying this, 
please let me know in a comment if I don't. I'm like Tinkerbell. You know, you have to clap for me to stay alive. <laughs> if I don't know that it's serving, you know, it doesn't mean much to me. If I know that it's serving, I want to keep coming back and helping. Do you have any questions? Is there anything happening in your life right now that you're just like, ugh, why is this happening? I want to see this differently. I'm just stuck in it. It feels like shit. It feels like this is happening to me, not for me. Is there anything that I can support you with? Use me, I'm here. Sorry for the snot. <laughs> we're just, we're doing a cleansing. <laughs> Oh, also I want to mention, um, if you love this conversation and learning about awareness training and being mindful of your thoughts and learning to work in harmony with universal law and the law of attraction, and you want to learn how to really utilize it for your benefit to live a life that you love so that you are just this optimal being of support and feeling like waking up every day and being like, yeah, this is what I thought this this is what I thought this life was about. Um, check out Ruby. It's a three month program that I teach and coach and private mentor you, which I have not offered in a couple of years. The link is in the profile. Read the whole page, please. And then if you would love more information, book a discovery call with me and we will talk. Oh, I'm so glad. You're so welcome, you guys. So glad I could be supportive. Be curious. Okay, I've never been on your live, but I needed this message today. Thank you for taking me on your morning walk. Very relaxing. I love the suggestion to be curious and resist the need to forecast. It often takes time to learn the lessons and then it cut off. I can't read the rest, I'm not sure why. Yeah, you're so welcome. This is what we're here for. You know, my mentor reaches back and pulls me forward with her level of awareness. This is literally what the cycle of life is all about and what we're all here to do. For me, especially women, because I'm a woman. I'm not saying that it's not what men also do. I'm just saying, I don't know, I'm not a man. So as we learn something, as we grow in our level of awareness, things that have always been there all of a sudden become apparent and we see them. And when we see them, we learn and we integrate. And when we're serving, that means reaching back and pulling other people forward. And it's just the honor that I have with my mentor. She just so humbly continues to support me year after year. I'm in my fourth year with her and I will never do it alone, ever. I can only see what is at my awareness. And I always want somebody who's just a few steps or farther along, who can say, hey, the view's great from up here, keep going. You know what I mean? Speaking of the view. <sighs> mm. What's happening in your life? Even if you're not on the live, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and put a little comment what you would love support with. I'm okay, Erica. Oops. I'm laid off and was going to use my free time for so many activities like skiing and sewing and playing piano. And then I broke my wrist. I'm bummed, but trying to accept it. Ah, Erica, I'm so sorry. Sending so many kisses to your wrist. So beautiful example. First of all, I really honor the disappointment. There is a crazy ass squirrel running around. The disappointment that you must be feeling, you know, you had these expectations, you had these plans, you were ready to go. I'm sure you were so excited. And then boom, something happens. Everything gets changed. The opportunity for what you expected to happen is removed. So feel that. Let yourself be disappointed. It's okay to have disappointment. That's what comes in life, you know? Feel this, the frustration. Let yourself grieve the experience that you never had, that you didn't get to have. Carve out some time for that. You know me, I love to journal. Um, 
maybe some meditation. If you are in the app, there's a whole free, if you're not part of our app, I encourage you all to join. The link is in our profile. And I made, I think there's seven classes completely free. One of them is intro to journaling. And Erica, I know you've taken intro to journaling, but sometimes it just really supports you to have that voice guiding you. The meditation in that I've heard from so many people is really supportive. So maybe just carve out like an hour and sit down with it and give yourself the space. Do you hear that? The space to feel and process. And then, and, and I think that this would be a really powerful question to work with, like over the next few months. What is this inviting me to know even more deeply about myself? What is this inviting me to connect with within myself? And here's the thing. When we are looking at something through the eyes of unfiltered frustration, anger, disappointment, by unfiltered, unprocessed, like, oh, I'm angry and frustrated and I'm not going to give myself time to actually feel these emotions. So they're just going to carry on into everything in my life. That's what happens when we don't give it time to process. When we look at things from that place, we're contracted. Nothing good can come from that. We can't see the positive. We can't feel grateful. But when we shift that perspective to one of gratitude, when we process those feelings so they feel held, so they feel heard, honored, then we can shift the lens to, like I was talking about earlier in this video, curiosity and even gratitude. So when we trust that there is a good in this for us, even in the question, right? Notice the question, why is this happening to me? That's a question that implies that it's a negative, right? I hate that word. That's a question that implies that this is not for your good there. But when we say, what is this inviting me into? Now that's a question that implies that you already trust that it's for your good, that something is happening here. Something that, that is orchestrated to support you and bring you an even greater level of joy in your life. In unexpected ways, this is where the try not to forecast comes in. Erica, how does that feel? Oh my God, so nice out. We've been really lucky the past few days, huh? Does anybody else want some support before I close? Hold on, I have to cross a lake here. Oh. I did it. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for asking the question. I know that that serves a lot of people. And just remember when you are courageous enough to be so vulnerable to ask for support, especially in a setting like this, it supports everybody, you know? And, and for those of you who perhaps don't have a broken wrist, but do have a squashed expectation or disappointment, I hope that you're able to apply that to your experience. All right. It feels like finding other activities is possible. Totally. And maybe Erica for you, <laughs> I love you and I know you, uh, activity, uh, active. I wonder if there's an invitation here for a, perhaps an internal quietness, a listening, a stillness, a stillness. How does it feel when I say that? <laughs> what could stillness bring? What could it open up for you? What part of you could you access in the energy of stillness? <sighs> Man, that's a good one for everybody. You know, we're so brainwashed to believe that activity, action, moving forward, that this is the path to success and progress. 
Well, I gotta tell you, some of the most successful and progressive experiences I've ever had was when I just stopped and I was still with myself and listening deeply to what was asking to come alive through me. Try that on. I'm rock jumping. Stillness has always been scary, but I would love to invite stillness into my life and truly experience stillness. Oh, I like the way you wrote that. Yes. Hmm, what's possible for me in the energy of stillness? <sighs> Awareness comes clearer. You know, just as I stopped moving, I became much more aware of everything around me. I become more in tune with my body because I'm not moving, I'm listening, I'm being present with it. I notice that my knee hurts. Maybe an invitation to stretch that out a little bit. And I encourage you to do some self-love on your wrist. You know, your wrist right now might be in your mind. And this is for anybody, if it's not your wrist, insert interruption of life activity here. That part of your body might be the subject of your disapproval right now. And that certainly won't support the healing process, right? So do some self-love and self-care for your wrist. Set up an altar for your wrist. Kiss your wrist. Tell it you love it. That's, I, I was on a live a couple days ago and talked about how sometimes when my body hurts, I kiss it. Thank you for supporting me. I love you. Okay. Thanks for coming with me. If you're on Instagram, the link is in profile for Ruby. If you're on the Facebook, I will post the link for Ruby because I'm going to download this and share it. If this supported you, give me some claps. Tinkerbell needs the uh, claps to keep her alive. Just so I know I'm making an impact. You know, we all need that validation. And have a beautiful day. I love you. Bye.